It is 7 o'clock. We do have a quorum. We'll call the City Council meeting in order. First item on the agenda is the invocation given by Councilman Gilmore, and then uh, I will lead us in the pledge to both the American and Texas flags. Y'all, please join me in a moment of silence. Well, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honoring the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Okay, this evening we have some proclamations and some presentations that we'd like to make. So, uh, begin with, uh, if I could ask uh, David Demore to come up with me, please, sir. Where you, David? There you go. All of you, come on up. <coughs> I'm sorry, your name was the only name they give me. Oh, that's right. That's right. Tonight we have a very special presentation, we, my proclamation we need to make. Uh, as you can see, <coughs> these ladies and gentlemen here uh, ride motorcycles. But you couldn't guess that, but they uh, And because of that, I think it's important that we make uh, ourselves aware of the dangers of what sometimes are incurred by people that ride motorcycles. And the majority of the time, it's a danger that other people create for them and not the safety that they, and not the things that they have done. <coughs> so this proclamation tonight is to <coughs> proclaim uh, this as Motorcycle Week in that we want to make sure that we let you have a few words when we finish here so that you can help let people understand the need for education and awareness of those who choose to ride motorcycles. Whereas today's society is finding more citizens involved in motorcycling on the roads of our country, and whereas motorcyclists are roughly unprotected and more prone to injury or death in a crash than other vehicle drivers, and whereas campaigns have helped inform riders and motorists alike on motorcycle safety issues to reduce motorcycle-related risks, injuries, and most of all, fatalities through a comprehensive approach to motorcycle safety, and where it is, it is the responsibility of all who put themselves behind the wheel to become aware of motorcyclists, regarding them with the same respect as any other vehicle traveling the highways of this country. And whereas urging all citizens of our community to become aware 
of the inherent danger involved in operating a motorcycle and give the operator respect on the road they so deserve. Now, therefore, I, Dean Euchert, Mayor of the City of Louisville, on behalf of the Louisville City Council, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2012 as Motorcycle Safety and Awareness Month in the City of Louisville, Texas, and urge all <coughs> residents to do their part to increase safety and awareness in our community. Proclaim the seventh day of May 2012. I'd uh, like to thank uh, Mayor Euchert and the uh, Louisville City Council members and all the citizens of Louisville uh, for working with us again this year uh, to <coughs> declare May Motorcycle Safety and Awareness Month. I've been working with uh, motorcycle safety and awareness programs for the last several years. In fact, this is the third year I've been to Louisville, and we've got nothing but support from the city of Louisville, and we appreciate that. Um, unfortunately, this is the second year that I've come to this meeting with a heavy heart. I lost another good friend this year. He was a young man in his 20s, Jeremy Ives. He was a three-time Iraq uh, veteran, wounded in duty, comes home to his wife and kids, only to be struck down this past year by a negligent hit-and-run driver. Um, so this actually, I mean, it's always been dear to my heart, but this actually hits home again for two years in a row. I lost a brother last year as well. Um, so I, I, I really appreciate y'all working with us. And, you know, the cities, you know, across Texas working with us to, to spread the word about motorcycle safety and awareness, uh, because um, if we can get the word out and just prevent one tragedy from happening, then we've actually done our job. Um, it's not only the motorcycle riders responsibility to, to be safe and aware, it's everybody on the road around them. And usually and typically the statistics say that two out of three injuries that involve a vehicle and a motorcycle the vehicle driver gets out and says i didn't see him so um i, I appreciate like i said the city of louisville working with us i encourage you to contact your relatives your neighbors let them know you know there's motorcycles out there on the road there's a lot in this town this town has a lot of motorcycles in it and if we can get the word out and we can prevent one tragedy from happening then we've done our job and thank you all very much before you step down, and I want to say also that these people play a very important part in our community here, not only with their motorcycle riding, but every year they, them and their friends participate in our toy run, motorcycle toy run every year, and they gather thousands of toys for the local kids here in our community. So we want to say thank you and God bless yeah. y'all, and we do need to be more careful. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank Appreciate you very much. It. If I could ask Charlene Davis to come forward, please. Hi, Charlene. Hi. Good to meet you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. You know, one of our most important parts here in the city is our, our hotel industry and, our, and uh, the way they accommodate our visitors here in the community and us at times when we have needs to uh, stay outside of our homes or when we have families and friends come in to stay and we want to make sure that we let people know here in this community how vital and how important they are you know uh, we just opened a uh, railroad street Toyota Louisville Railroad Street Park here about two years ago and over that we've already gotten over 60,000 hotel room nights which help our hotels and each year each week or each month I should say we have meetings to try to come up with new ideas to make sure that our hoteliers have availability to our citizens and stuff so that we can bring in more hotel room nights, which in turn, we put that money back into the beautification of the city. So with that, I'd like to give you this proclamation. Whereas leisure travel spending in Texas directly supports more than 
540,000 jobs, accounting for more than $18.2 billion in personal income. And whereas the Dallas-Fort Worth area is the top tourism destination in Texas with more than 25 million visitors each year, generating more than $1 billion last year in the state and local tax revenue. And whereas Louisville is rapidly increasing its profile within the region to attract leisure visitors that support the city's 2,400 hotel rooms, 200, 200 restaurants, and hundreds of retail businesses. Whereas the Governor's Office of Economic Development and Tourism has declared the second week of May to be Texas Travel and Tourism Week as a way to recognize the contributions of the travel industry and the vast economic potential of tourism. Now, therefore, I, Dean Euchert, the Mayor of the City of Louisville, along with the members of the City Council, do hereby proclaim the week of May 5th through 12th, 2012, as Texas Travel and Tourism Week, proclaimed the seventh day of May, 2012. I want to thank you and the council for allowing me to come and accept this in behalf of the hotels in the city and it is our pleasure to serve you at any time. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Uh -huh. Then next if I could ask uh, James Wallingsford and Jason Longbine to come forward please. Thank you all so much for taking time out and coming tonight. We appreciate it. We appreciate all that you do. You know, uh, a lot of times we take our water for granted. Uh, we're a country that's blessed with uh, an ample water supply. Yet, sometimes we take that for granted that uh, when we go take a warm shower in the morning, a lot of people in the world don't have that opportunity. Or when we go to flush the toilet, we don't have it. But the best thing we've got is we've got one of the best drinking waters in the country. And I'm not talking about bottled water. We could bottle it and sell it, I'm sure, because it is. We won many awards for this. And I believe we were talking about it before in the workshop session tonight. Now, the last uh, several years, we've gotten this award. We certainly appreciate that. We appreciate what you gentlemen do and what your coworkers do for this. We certainly appreciate everything that you do on that. So with that, I'd like to say, Whereas water is a basic and essential need of all humankind and all living things to sustain life, and whereas water is a limited resource that should be used wisely and the water supply protected by preventing pollution and conservating, conserving water, and whereas public works and utilities provide essential services needed for the protection of health and welfare for our community as part of their everyday lives, and whereas the support of a satisfied and informed citizenry is vital to the professional operation of the public works, utility system, and essential programs such as water production and distribution, wastewater treatment and collection, environmental services, streets and storm drainage, traffic and fleet operations, and public buildings and facilities. And whereas the quality and efficiencies of these facilities, as well as their planning, design, and construction is vitally dependent upon the effects and skills of public service employees. Whereas the efficiency of the qualified and committed personnel who staff the Public Service Department is significantly influenced by, influenced by citizens' attitudes and appreciation the important work they perform, now therefore I, Dean Euchert, Mayor of the City of Louisville, on behalf of the City Council, do here proclaim the week of May 6th through May 12, 2012 as National Drinking Water Week and May, 6, May 20th through 26, 2012 as National Public Works Week and urge all citizens and civic organizations to understand and recognize the contributions of the Public Services Department providing for our daily utility needs and protecting the health, safety, and well-being of our community proclaimed the seventh day of May 2012. Once again, gentlemen, I want to thank you all very much for all the work that you and your fellow workers do. I appreciate it very greatly. We could make it a picture for you all. Right ahead. Uh, I would just like to congratulate all of the hardworking employees of uh, utilities and public works for doing such a good job of providing drinking water and uh, other public services uh, for the, all the residents and businesses of the city of Louisville. Thank you.
thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank thank you. If I could have Officer Jay Powell please come forward. Captain Powell. There you go. You know, we uh, we try to, like I say, recognize our team members here in the community, here in our city, <laughs> as often we can for such a wonderful work they do, just as we did with our our water and utilities department. Uh, without the services of these individuals, uh, our city wouldn't be half the community that it is. And as you know, our police department, along with our fire department and other uh, other services we have here, is what makes this city such a great uh, and wonderful city to be a part of. And because of the service that you gentlemen and your, your uh, do and your fellow workers do in your department, uh, we have one of the safest cities in the community. And when you look at our uh, uh, surf, uh, customer service satisfaction surveys, you'll see that they feel like they are safe in this community and they like the way the city is run. So we certainly appreciate what you've done for us. And with that, <coughs> Whereas the Congress of the United States of America has designated May 13th through May 19th, 2012 to be dedicated as National Police Week and May 15th, 2012 as Police Memorial Day. And whereas our law enforcement officers are guardians of life and property, defenders of the individual right to be free men and women, warriors in the battle against crime, and are dedicated to the preservation of life and property. And whereas our community desires to remember those law enforcement officers who have been killed in the performance of their duties. Now, therefore, I, Dean Euchert, the mayor of the city of Louisville, Texas, do hereby proclaim the week of May 13th through 19th, 2012 as National Police Officers Week and May 15th, 2012 as Police Memorial Day in the city of Louisville and urge all of our citizens to make every effort to express their heartfelt appreciation to the men and women who have sacrificed their lives to guard us and protect us and our loved ones against all who would violate the law proclaim the seventh day, May 2012. Uh, sure, just, I'll be very brief. Uh, thank you, Mayor Council, tonight for your support um, issuing this proclamation. Also, moreover, thank you, Chief, Council, City Admin, for giving us the equipment we need to do our jobs as uh, safely as we can. Thank you for everything. Thank you very Thank much. You. Okay. Next, we have some more recognition we'd like to make. Uh, actually, we're gonna do this with our youth tonight. So if I could have Miss Lori Yonkers to come forward with me, please, and kind of help me with this. How long have you been doing this now, Lori? Uh, three years. Lori's been working with this program now for three years. And I think she's going to let her tell you a little bit more about it here in a few minutes. But I think she will tell you that without this program in our community here, uh, some of our young people wouldn't have the opportunity that they've had in life <coughs> to uh, help correct some of the uh, decisions that they made and make sure that they understand that there are ramifications for everything that we do in life. And to make sure that you understand that you have to step forward and take responsibility for what you do in life. And these young people, along with the supervision of Ms. Yonkers and several others that we're gonna talk about here in a minute, it gives these young people opportunity to understand those exact things. That we are responsible for ourselves, we must take responsibility for the actions we make, and that there are ramifications for those things. So with that, I'm gonna let her kind of step forward and tell us a little bit more about our teen court. Okay, as um, the, mayor, the mayor said, um, our teen court is basically um, an advantage in the community to offenders who have committed Class C misdemeanors. All youth that have committed a Class C misdemeanor, um, it's a voluntary program. 
So if they choose um, to be placed in the teen court program, by being in the program, instead of paying their fine, they do community service hours and jury terms. And so that's how they um, pay for their fine through that community service and jury terms. It also exposes them to the judicial system, which is a good thing. And we just we're ho we hope to de deter them from committing any future um, criminal activity. Um, our teen court is run by all volunteers, so we really rely on youth in the community to help us with the teen court program. And that's basically why we're here tonight, is to honor the volunteers that help run the teen court program. It would not exist if we didn't have um, any youth in the community um, running our program. Um, so with that, I guess we can go ahead and honor those youth tonight. And they're well-deserving. They Both of the um, individuals that are here tonight, they've been with the Teen Court program for quite some time. Some of our youth start in middle school, and they go all the way through high school, uh, volunteering their time and efforts um, for, for our Teen Court program. Um, and once that youth commits um, or follows through on everything that's um, required of them in our teen court program, that case gets dismissed. So that's the main advantage of the teen court program is that it does give them a second chance in the community. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. So at this time, what we would like to do is honor our 2012 graduating teen court class. And you know, these people serve, as you've seen, they serve as not only sometimes the defendant, but they're the lawyer. <coughs> They're the judge, they're the bailiff, and they have service through all these years, these programs, different things that they take on, and I think they will tell you themselves that it helps them to better understand our judicial system here in our country. So at this time, we would like to honor this graduating class. We'd like to honor, and if you would come forward as I, as I read your name, and then we're going to get a picture with you, and then if you'll remain up here, we'll get a group picture at the end. So if we could have Hattie Baji come forward, please. Congratulations, Hattie, and thank you so much for all that you've thank done. Congratulations. Then if we could have Caitlin Franks come forward. Caitlin, thank you so much for all that you do and for the work and time you've put into it. <laughs> Jasmine Ty. <clears throat> okay. Jasmine, congratulations and thank you so much for all the work and effort that you put in this program. And then we do have one other recipient. She was unable to make this uh, meeting tonight. She did have a problem. She couldn't be here. Is Hannah Wyborg was also recognized as, as graduation from the program. The one reason we asked you to come uh, wait up here for us is not only did we want to get a, a group picture, but we also give a scholarship each year. And uh, the Teen Court Scholarship each year is the City of Louisville honors a Teen Court volunteer who exemplifies not only outstanding academic achievements, but also a willingness to serve his or her community through dedicated community involvement. The funds from the Louisville Flower Mound Teen Court Scholarship come from jurors in municipal court who choose to donate their juror pay for the program. And now the City Council and I are very pleased to announce the winner of the $1,000 scholarship this year. The deserving senior of this year's recipient is Ms. Caitlin Frank. Congratulations. As you can tell, she didn't know. It was a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Thank Caitlin. You so Thank much. you. Caitlin is, a, is currently a senior at Marcus High School and has served on the teen court since she was in the eighth grade. She credits teen court for providing her valuable skills, such as public speaking and leadership skills. The program also has improved her confidence and the ability to handle stressful situations with poise, as she certainly did right here. You saw that. She did that well. <laughs> Caitlin plans to attend St. Edwards University or UNT Honors College and, ma and major in marketing. 
We wish her well, and we're very proud of all the accomplishments you've made, David. Congratulations. Then we have one more very special scholarship that we want to give tonight also. Uh, we had a, uh, a gentleman here that served as city attorney for Louisville for over 37 years. He did this city well. Uh, it made us all very proud. He had the support of his lovely wife for all those years to help him to give up some of his, a lot of his time to share him with the community. <coughs> and upon his retirement, he decided, he and his wife decided they would like to establish a scholarship fund. So we have an additional scholarship fund to distribute at this time. So I would like to ask uh, if I could have Ron and Marilyn England to please come forward with me. I know you didn't expect this and don't hate me, but I'd like to ask you to come forward because this is the Ron and Marilyn Neiman Scholarship Award that we're gonna be giving away now. And thank you so much, Marilyn, for coming yeah. forward. Thank you so much, Mr. Neiman, we appreciate it. And like I said, they wanted to establish this program because I think they knew through his years of service in the judicial system how important it is that we help our youth understand uh, the way our system in this country works far better than any other country in the world. And so with that, they wanted to try to establish this program. So uh, this year, the $1,000 scholarship recipient is Hattie Baji. Hattie, congratulations. This, uh, let's say, uh, Hattie is a very outstanding student in the community who is currently a senior at Louisville High School. She has served as a volunteer for our program for over four years. Hattie is a member of our winning team that competed at the North Texas Teen Court Competition this year. She has the ability to inspire other people who surround her with her resourcefulness and her enthusiasm. She has also demonstrated excellent leadership skills by mentoring others who are new to the Teen Court program. Hattie credits the Teen Court program for her knowledge about court procedures and feels it has improved her role as an attorney. Hattie will either attend Texas Western Law School in Fort Worth or the University of Kentucky next year. She plans to pursue a career as a lawyer and a broadcast journalist for the CNN News Network. And so we are so glad to have both of these young ladies represent us tonight. Thank you so much and congratulations. <laughs> we want to recognize it. It's very special. Congratulations. And Mr. Miss Neiman, thank you very much, too, for what you did in the scholarship for it. Stay for the rest of the meeting. <laughs> no, I gotta do that too. <laughs> okay, next item agenda is a public hearing consideration of an ordinance. For zone change request from agriculture open space to light industrial zoning district on 0 0.38 acres located at 565 Bennett Lane, further identified as Edmund A. Day Survey, abstract number 11, track 41, as requested by Danny Busey, the property owner. <coughs> Excuse me. The, point zero, the 0 0.38 acre property is located north of Bennett Lane and west of Railroad Street within the Waters Ridge North Business Park. The subject property consists of one tract and is currently vacant. The applicant intends to develop the property for commercial use. Land surrounding the 0.38 acre site is primarily zoned light industrial, with the subject property being one of the only remaining parcels 
in the area maintaining the AO or agriculture only designation. Properties abutting the site's southern boundary contain a variety of industrial and commercial uses within the Waters Ridge Business Park, while property to the north, east, and west are vacant. The Planning Zoning Commission recommended approval of the zoning request by vote 40 at their April 3rd, 2012 meeting. <coughs> Recommendation is that Council approve the ordinance for a zoning change request as set forth in the above caption. I do not have any speaker cards filled out. Councilman Durham? I may have moved to close the public hearing. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Durham to close the public hearing, a second by Councilman Gilmore. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Councilman Durham? Uh, if no one has anything else, I move to approve. Second. I have a motion to approve by Councilman Durham, a second by Councilman Grinna. Any discussion? This is, this is an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Louisville, Texas, that amends the zoning ordinance of the City of Louisville, Texas, granting zoning changes on the 0.38 acre track of land fully and completely described in the attached Exhibit A, ordering a change in the use of said property from agricultural open space district zoning to light industrial district zoning, correcting the official zoning map, preserving all other portions of the zoning ordinance, providing a clause relating to severability, determining that the public interest and general welfare demand a zoning change and amendment therein made, providing a penalty and declaring an emergency. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Motion carries. Next item is Visitor Citizens Forum. At this time, any person with business before the council not scheduled on the agenda may speak to the council. No formal action can be taken on these items at this meeting. I do have speaker cards filled out here. Uh, first is Michelle French. And if you would just give your name and address for the record, please. Thank you. Well, good evening. My name is Michelle French, and I reside at 11699 Mitchell Circle in Ponder. And the reason why I'm here tonight is I just wanted to come and formally introduce myself to, to you, Mayor, and to the Council. It's so nice to be able to be here. I'm running for tax assessor here in Denton County. I wanted to give you a little bit of background about myself. I actually grew up here in Louisville. I've been here since 1971, went to Louisville High School, and uh, met and married my husband here almost 31 years ago. And we raised our kiddos here as well. I have two grown sons now. But I've worked at the, at the tax office for almost 29 years now. And throughout my career there, I've earned my tax assessor's license and have risen to, uh, well, basically have served in just about every, every position available. And I now serve as the chief deputy there. And uh, decided upon the announcement of the retirement of our tax assessor, Steve Mossman, decided to go ahead and run for office. And so I wanted to just come here and formally introduce myself, since I hadn't really had a chance to do that yet. Some of the things that I feel very strongly about as uh, hopefully the next tax assessor is education. Some of the things that I'll be doing, should I be elected, is being able to go out into the community and hold information forums with our taxpayers and bringing people from the various areas that we all work with, the appraisal district, the real estate uh, uh, agencies, uh, being able to, to utilize the resources of our professionals in the property tax industry as well as the motor vehicle industry and get those people with our, with our customers and with our taxpayers and uh, engage in informational forums to help, help better inform our taxpayers of the process that we work within and because it can be somewhat a, a complex process to say the least. Uh, something else that I'll be doing is actually going to our councils and our school boards and actually explaining what the tax office is doing, giving you all a little bit more information about the inside uh, of the tax office and how what we do assist you and how what you do assists us as well. So I appreciate your time and um, I certainly hope that I have uh, support and, and will look forward to serving as your next tax assessor should I be elected. And thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Next is Kathy Duke. Hi, I'm Kathy Duke. I live at 2403 Parkview in Highland Village. Mayor, Council, thank you for having me here tonight. I just wanted to formally stand here and let you know that I am running for LISD School Board Place One. And I know many of you, 
I've lived in this area since 1972 and I am a Louisville High School graduate. My kids go to school <coughs> at Marcus and Heritage and I really am looking forward to serving our school district again. I want to go back in and help us through the changes that we're having through our finances and bring back my positive leadership that I have. I don't want to take up much of your time, but only one more day of early voting, just in case y'all didn't know. <laughs> and the election day is May 12th, so I look forward to seeing you and working with you in the future. Thanks. Thank you very much. Saul Friedenberg. Hi, my name is Saul Friedenberg, and thank you for letting me come speak. I live at uh, 2829 Cameron Bay, uh, the Meridian subdivision. I mainly came up here this, uh, uh, this evening to thank the mayor, thank the council, thank the park board uh, for a beautiful brand new park that uh, we had a ribbon cutting for this weekend. I uh, also wanted to again thank Bob Monaghan and also thank the police department and also the fire department that came to our event. Uh, I also wanted, uh, since I wasn't sure that the chief was gonna be here this evening, I wanted to also uh, let the city know and also the chief know about Officer Stern. He's been a fantastic part of our community. Um, the outreach of the police department has been fantastic with us. Uh, I, would, I am actually the president of the HOA. Um, been involved now for five years. And this is, my term is coming to the end here shortly in about 20 days. And it's, it's just been a blessing working with the city on this park. And we look forward to working with them on the phase two and phase three, whenever that comes about. So again, thank you all and thank you for your support. Well, thank you, Saul. And I, I wanna thank you and, and your entire neighborhood for being such good citizens here in our community. Uh, from what everything staff has told me is, uh, Y'all probably one of the best neighborhoods we've had to work with in establishing a park, a park, a park, excuse me, a park for the neighborhood, and not only your involvement during the planning process of the park, but also once the park began, how so many of you actually came out there and physically helped. Uh, your neighbors actually came there, physically pulled weeds, helped get the flower beds going, and everything, and it had a wonderful turnout at the uh, ribbon cutting Saturday. And we appreciate that you are so proud of your park and I appreciate your words there where you encouraged your citizens there that it was their park and reminded them to please take care of it and help keep it clean stuff. And I thank you very much for that, sir. Uh, absolutely, and just so you know, we actually had, including the kids on that side, there was actually 285 people one. at the at the event on Saturday, so. It was a wonderful event. Yep. Thank, thank you, you very much, thank you. appreciate your work. Will Travis. <clears throat> You're smiling, I'm not gonna sing, Mayor. <laughs> Karaoke the other night. <laughs> My name's Will Travis, I live at 575 Orchid Hill Lane in uh, Argyle uh, slash Copper Canyon. My family has been fighting for this country and state before it was a state. My fifth generation uncle was the commander of the Alamo. And with that said, my name is William B. Travis and I'm running for sheriff here in Denton County. I'm the only candidate that possesses both federal and military background. Once I graduated from college, I went to work for the police department in Dallas. From there, I went to the United States Drug Enforcement Administration as a special agent. I'm currently an Argy Argyle volunteer firefighter in the Argyle Fire District. I've also served in the United States Coast Guard and United States Air Force in, military, in uh, law enforcement capacity. I'm also the only candidate that has started and maintained two very successful businesses here in Denton County. And ladies and gentlemen, our Sheriff's Department's a business, a $43 million business. It needs to be run by somebody that has an extensive law enforcement background and an extensive business background. Our early voting starts next Monday on the 14th. I'd appreciate all of your votes. Our uh, election day is on the 29th, not to get confused with the city election, so I'd appreciate your vote. Thank you all so much. Have Thank a good you, evening. Sir. Thank you, sir. Next item on agenda is the consent agenda. All the following items on the consent agenda are considered to be self-explanatory by the council and will be enacted with one motion. There'll be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member or citizen so requests. For a citizen to request removal of an item, a speaker card must be filled out and submitted to the city secretary. I did not have any cards filled out, nor any council person asked to pay anything removed. Council Grena. 
I move to close the uh, consent agenda. No, I, I mean move to approve the consent agenda. Okay, <coughs> move to Sorry. approve the consent agenda by Councilman Grena. Second. Second by Councilman Ferguson. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item six is consideration of an ordinance amending the Louisville City Code, Chapter 9, Nuances, Article 1, by adding a definition for the Old Town Entertainment District and providing for exceptions to certain uh, noise restrictions if said noise is occurring within the Old Town Entertainment District. <clears throat> At its winter retreat in February 2012, Council directed staff to define boundaries of an entertainment district in Old Town. Council further authorized an exemption from various portions of the city's noise ordinance. Although an exemption is allowed for some noises in the Old Town Entertainment District under the ordinance, state law shall still apply. The proposed amended ordinance prepared by the city attorney defines the Old Town Entertainment District and provides for exemptions, exceptions to certain noise restrictions in the ordinance if the noise is coming from the Old Town Entertainment District. Recommendation is that the City Council approve the ordinance as set forth in the above caption. If we could, we're going to have uh, Chief Russ Kerbo do a presentation on this. Yes, sir, Mayor. In addition to what you read from the uh, administrative comments, we thought it was important to, to mention on air uh, for those who might be watching at home uh, what days and what times that, that those exceptions might be granted if you approve the ordinance tonight. And that would be Sunday through Thursday from noon to 11 p.m and Friday to Saturday from noon to 11.30 p.m. And if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer those. Council, have any questions? No. Councilman Gilmore? Move to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve by Councilman Gilmore, a second by Councilman Garina. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Oh, Mayor. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Councilor, go this ahead. This is an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Louisville, Texas, amending the Louisville City Code Chapter 9 nuisances article one by adding a definition for the old town entertainment district and providing for exceptions to certain noise restrictions if said noise is occur occurring within the old town entertainment district providing a repealer providing for severability providing a penalty providing an effective date and declaring an emergency thank you Councilor. all in favor aye. 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 aye opposed motion carries Item seven is consideration of nominations for the North Central Texas Council of Governments, Officers and Directors for the 2012-2013 Executive Board. The North Texas Council of Governments will be electing officers and directors for 2012-2013 at its General Assembly meeting on June 15, 2012. The City of Louisville has been invited to submit a recommendation for a board position. Past residents of the NCTCOG Executive Board will serve on the nominating committee and will review the recommendations submitted by member governments. Only one vacancy is certain. This vacancy will be in the red representation categories of cities with population of 25,000 or more. Nominations are due by May 11, 2012. Recommendation is that council consider making nominations to the executive board committee. Uh, Councilman Gilmore. Please. Mayor, I'd like to take the opportunity to nominate uh, Councilman Leroy Vaughn uh, to uh, put his hat in the ring for this committee. Second. I have a motion to uh, nominate Councilman Leroy Vaughn, Deputy Mayor Pro Tem Leroy Devon, and by Councilman Gilmore, a second by Councilman Durham. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So you didn't vote no, right, Leroy? <laughs> no, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir, for your offer to uh, 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 commit to these meetings as they can be sometimes be uh, very uh, long meetings and, and but they're very important for our community and thank you very much sir for offering to step forward on that my pleasure <clears throat> item eight is consideration of request for variance to the Louisville city code section 2-201 regarding waiving special event permit fees request to utilize authorized city property at the toyota Louisville railroad park and approval of partial <coughs> roadway closures on Valley Ridge Boulevard, State Highway 121 Business, FM 544, Hebron Parkway, and Railroad Street for the Qantas Club of Greater Louisville Toe Tag Triathlon event as requested by David Fowler representing the Greater Louisville Qantas Club. The Greater Louisville Qantas Club submitted a special event permit application in March 2012 for a triathlon event planned for June 17, 2012 at the Toyota Louisville Railroad Park. 
This is a new event at the park. In addition to a request for a permit, the club is also <coughs> requesting a waiver of fees and use of city property for the event. Other nonprofits have submitted a request of such waivers in the past and have been approved by the city council. The total amount of the request for waiver of fees for this event is $3,974. All proceeds will be distributed to court appointed special advocates, advocates CASA of Denton County. Recommendation of staff is that council approve the request for the waivers of fees and the use of city property and roadway closures as set forth in the caption above. Uh, I will just say that the Qantas Club does a trend, tremendous amount of work here in our community from the breakfast with Santa to the, the rodeo, stick rodeo at, at Western Days and several other activities that they're involved here in the community. We do appreciate your great work. With that, Councilman Ferguson. Uh, move to approve the request as written. And, and I will also say, I'm sorry, I will also say that we do have uh, two cards here filled out, one by David Fowler and one by Michael Niles. Uh, they did not wish to speak, but they are in support. And then uh, Sherry Gidding of CASA is also here. Did you want to speak, Sherry? Would you like to speak, ma'am? Come on up. I'm Sherry Giddy and I live at, well, I'm representing CASA at 614 North Bell Avenue in Denton. I live in Pond, in a, I don't even know where I live. <laughs> I've been here so long, I long forgot. Day. I think I live in Bolivar. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to say, first of all, the council already supports CASA through the grant process every year and we appreciate your support. The Greater Louisville Qantas Club has adopted CASA for this event and we're working together and hoping to raise some significant funds and so your approval of this request to waive the permit fees would mean more money goes to serving children in Denton County and you know about the kids we serve. So I just wanted to say thank you for your consideration of it and I hope that you'll vote in favor. Well, we want to thank you also for the work that you and CASA do here in our community. Thank you, I appreciate that. Okay, Ms. Ferguson, go ahead. Again, move to approve the request as written. Second. I have a motion to approve by Councilman Ferguson, a second by Councilman Grinna. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to reports. Nika? Bob? Tremendous uh, opening for the park, sir. You're, you're, as always, you and your staff did a tremendous job out there, and, and uh, I heard nothing but praise for both you, the police, and fire departments from all the citizens that were out there. What a wonderful job it was and what a pleasure they uh, found living here in the city of Louisville. So I want to thank you all for that. Chief? Yes, Mayor, I do have an announcement tonight. Uh, just wanted to remind everybody that uh, beginning this week, Thursday morning, is our fifth uh, Keeping Tradition Alive event. Um, it'll kick off on Thursday morning, uh, starting with breakfast at 7 o'clock and our opening ceremonies at 8.30. We would like to invite you and all council members, uh, all of our management and, and director staff to, to please join us for this event if, if you would like to. Um, as I said, the, the opening ceremonies will begin at 8.30 and will conclude somewhere between 10 and 10.30. And then uh, also, as everyone knows, we, uh, we do a big, uh, I guess you'd call it mass band out in front of City Hall on Thursday night. And right now the weather's looking perfect. Um, and just to let you know, at this time we have 315 people registered for the event, which is the largest event, uh, and this being our fifth year. And that's not even counting instructors or, or guest speakers. So we're being told that the hotel is completely full. So that's good for business there. And uh, we'd really like for you to come out and support us. Uh, we appreciate the support you give us throughout the year for this event. And we'd just love to see you there. So I'd like to see if you could make it. You bet. It's a great event. And I know our, our citizens always look forward to it. We appreciate you hosting it again this year. Linda? Chief Kerbo. Yes, Mayor, I'm, I'm happy to report that uh, despite the lack of rain that we've had in April, the lake is only about a, less than a foot below conservation level. So just want you to know that. <laughs> Carol, would you like to give us an update on the police department? <laughs> well, I understand Brand's you're doing up. a very good job, Mayor. <laughs> Once again tonight, Carol, we, we were honored to, uh, uh, to honor the, your staff that works with you. Uh, like I said, sometimes we take for granted our water, sewer, and streets sometimes, and uh, we're very blessed to live in a community that is, is so well um, positioned in, in, our, in all three of those categories. 
and that we stay on top of it and we maintain them and it's all because of you and your staff and the work they do and the planning that you do so we we thank you and your staff all very much we appreciate it greatly thank you, Mayor. donna Brenda? mr ferris we had a big event yesterday yes sir mayor we appreciate uh, your support we had the uh, annual city employee golf tournament out at lake park golf uh, we appreciate the mayor being there. We also had former Councilman Bernals and uh, former Councilman Watts who uh, got hit in the eye with a golf ball but <laughs> played through it. We had about 50 players. We had a great day. We also um, dedicated the putting contest to Larry Love in memory of him, and he did have a family member there. So it was a great time. It was a good uh, morale booster for the employees and retirees. And I want to thank you and Mr. Pickett for putting that together. Uh, I appreciate Mr. Pickett coming out of retirement to help you do that, and it was a great time had by all. It was really, uh, you can see the, the team members here, both present and, and that have retired, how much they in, enjoyed that getting to see each other. It was funny, several of the ones that were there that were retired said, you know, you don't really miss the work, but you miss the people, and we appreciate y'all doing that, so it was good that you did that. Mr. Backus. Councilman Durham. Yes, Mayor. Uh, I just want to remind everybody that the uh, United States Post Office letter carriers are doing a food drive this weekend, May the Saturday, May the 12th. And if you'll put uh, canned goods, non-perishable goods, out by the uh, um, your mailbox in some kind of container, they'll pick those up and get them to uh, needy folks. Right. They will actually be putting uh, bags in your mailboxes on the 10th and the 11th, I believe it is. And then if you'll put those back out filled with canned goods on the 12th, that'd be great because it does go to the communities here in our, I mean, to the families here in our community. Councilman Grena. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to remind people that if they're going to water their lawns, to try to do it on the days that trash pickup comes up. Dallas is uh, going to pretty much a very strict uh, mandatory uh, water conservation. We should all help to do that also. And uh, I was going to talk about voting, but I'll let Ms. Heinze do that also. Thank you. Councilman Gilmore. i uh, got an event that's very near and dear to my heart because I've been doing it for a long time um, with my Cub Scouts. Um, this past weekend, I was at Hickory Creek Park for our family camp out. And um, because there was no burn ban, we got to have our first bonfire in, in quite some time. And we retire flags. And it's one of the big things that we do as scouts. Well, the, the city. Uh, the Morning Rotary, uh, the BSA, and the Girl Scouts of America and this, uh, are all getting together on the 19th to have a, our second um, <clears throat> annual, hopefully this will become a big thing and a regular thing, um, flag retirement. And it will be from 1 to 2 at the MCL Grand. And the, the ceremony is beautiful. And I'll, I'll tell you the impact that this had. I, I had one of my third graders, and we had him lined up in his little uniform, and he was all set, and we were, you know, it was very solemn. And I handed him a flag and he was to hug it to his chest. And as we walked up to the bonfire, he whispers to me, he goes, Mr. Gilmore, I'm going to miss this flag. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's the emotion that you'll get from this. And it is a great thing. It is awesome for civic pride, and it, and it teaches our kids respect for the flag. I can't think of a better thing to be doing on the 19th from 1 to 2. That's all I have, man. Oh, oh that's five bucks oh. for my kids' college. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Please mute your phones wow. during the meeting. There, Look who it is. <laughs> what is it? Generic. Jean, Jean Carey. Oh, it's <laughs> Mayor Carey. <laughs> it's Mayor Carey. What am I supposed to be doing right now? <laughs> Speak up in the microphone, please, sir. I think he gave up. <laughs> Anyhow, after that, I can't follow. Uh, but the 1 to 2 p.m. on the 19th at the MCL Grand, you can get information on the city website. That's all, Mayor. Mr. ring a ling, -ling uh, city manager? <laughs> no, sir. Do you have anything, sir? No. You sure? Yeah. Do you like to make, say anything about people turning off their cell phones yeah, or anything? Well, we'll huh? cover that later on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. King has a pet peeve about that when somebody, he's in a meeting, somebody doesn't do that. So, you know, things go around. That's a first. <laughs> Glad I was here. Councilman Ferguson. Uh, I got a few items. First of all, I'm always happy to announce things going on at the MCL Grand. So, uh, fourth Annual Denton County Women in Business Conference and Expo, uh, May 10th from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. 
Um, the uh, Visual Arts League will be starting up a new exhibit called The Energy of Life. That'll begin on May 12th, which is Saturday, and run through June 23rd. There is a reception uh, connected with that on May 12th, but I didn't get a time, so check their website if you're interested in going. And then a real interesting item, May 19th, uh, students in the LISD Media Arts Program at Dale Jackson Center will be preventing presenting LISD Media Arts Film Festival. And that's May 19th from 5 to 7 p.m. And then I promise I won't go on too long about this because everybody heard me earlier, but uh, Betty Sue will be here playing on May 28th. I'm just gonna tell you, if you wanna know about Betty Sue, talk to me. I've seen her many times and I will go see her anytime I can. And um, yeah, you will hear about her after the concert if you didn't go and then you'll be sorry. So make that concert. A uh, couple of other items. Uh, first of all, I want to thank um, Saul Friedenberg and the folks over there in that neighborhood. Um, your involvement is is uh, has ramifications that I think people don't always realize. It goes way beyond the park. Um, bringing your community together will help reduce crime. That cuts expenses for this city. Um, Y'all will take care of that park. I know you will. That'll cut expenses for this city. So we all get something from it, and it was a real pleasure to be there. Um, I will tell you, though, as an update for many who are going to want to know, uh, David Atkinson, who has been on our park board for some time, and we all know him and love him, uh, collapsed um, just a little bit before the ribbon-cutting ceremony. And um, there was, uh, he was, this, you know, had EMT people there, fortunately, so uh, they could get to work on him right away. Uh, they did transport him to Baylor Carrollton Hospital, that's the old Trinity Medical Center. And I uh, talked to his um, sister-in-law Saturday afternoon, and things were very much touch and go. They were um, very concerned. They were not getting good news from the doctors. Um, he was not responding well. I uh, talked to his um, daughter Saturday night. He was doing a little bit better. I talked to his daughter today about 12.30. He's sitting up. Um, he can't talk. They think maybe he bit his tongue when he fell and his tongue is swollen, but they don't think there's brain damage. Uh, he recognizes people. He responds to commands. Um, he's pretty chipper and it's just a phenomenal recovery. So uh, for those of you, and I know I was one of them that prayed about that, um, this is an amazing result. So, uh, and then, um, uh, one other thing that I think you need to be aware of is that my opponent in this race, Steve Hill, lost his sister this weekend due to a drunk driver. So if you'll keep him and his family in your prayers, I would appreciate it. And that's all I have. Councilman Bond? Uh, nothing, man. Uh, one other thing I'd like to add is you see we've had a lot to be thankful for here tonight. But I really want to say again, thankful for our, our police and fire department. Uh, I was privileged to be a, a part of a uh, program which they do every year with our school district uh, through our uh, nine and now well ninth grade campus still ninth grade campus and uh, it's a program called deadly decisions and it's about trying to help uh, alert and inform our young people about the hazards and dangers of driving and because they're like I say ninth graders getting ready to get into start driving vehicles. The program that, that was put on was tre tremendously effective. Uh, I thought it was, uh, not only was it very moving, it was bone chilling to the point that I think it really got across some awareness to those young people. And I wanna thank both of you for your input and for all the, the team members that you had out there with you because it was a wonderful program that you put on and the school district asked me to once again pass on a thank you to both of you because it was a wonderful job. We thank you for that. In accordance with Texas Government Code, subchapter D, section 551.071. Uh, Mayor? Yes. I'm sorry. Did you have Julie talk? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I skipped. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Counselor, did you have anything? Julie, I apologize. That's okay. Just a reminder that tomorrow is the last day for early voting. It's from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. at the Municipal Annex. Election day is Saturday, May the 12th. Um, if you're not sure where you need to vote, just give our office a call and we will help you. 
And, and to that, I will talk that I did talk to the county today, and they said that the new voters registration cards have been mailed out, are in the process of being mailed out right now. So uh, you should be getting them, but you can vote without the new card. You can vote with your ID. You can vote with your state-issued ID. I apologize. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Councilman Durham, for reminding me that. In accordance with Texas Government Code, Subchapter D, Section 551.071, uh, consultation with the attorney on pending litigation, and Section 551.071, consultation with the attorney over pending litigation, and uh, United States District Court for Eastern District of Texas, and uh, City of Louisville versus Robert C. Dahl, Revocable Living Trust, and Robert C. Dahl, uh, Denton County Probate Court. Section 551.071, consultation with attorney on legal issues related to notice of receipt of applicant and intent to obtain municipal solid waste permit amendment proposed permit number 1312B. Section 551.072, uh, property acquisition. And Section 551.087, economic development regarding economic development negotiations will now convene into executive session. most I've ever had. Call the uh, council back into order. Is there any action to be taken this time, council? Move to adjourn. Second. We have a motion to adjourn by Councilman Grinna. Second by Councilman Ferguson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. I did that earlier.